Hi, this is Millie Kay, and it's Friday, April 26, 2019. The subject of today's video is how does water get out of the Oroville Reservoir? And I'm showing a DWR photo here um, that will show you the basics. And while I'm at it, I'll tell you, I, if you're a regular viewer of mine, this may be repetitive for you or a little too basic but I would like to put the information out there for the people who need it. So in this photo, you'll see over to the right is the Oroville Dam. And the Oroville Dam is an earthen embankment dam, 770 feet high, the tallest in the United States. However, the crest of the dam at the very top sits at an elevation of 922 feet above sea level. So when I refer to the footage, it's above sea level. So the dam, the top of the dam is 922 feet above sea level. Then over here in the middle, we have the main service spillway. And the bottom of this service spillway's gates, it's a gated structure, so they can measure water that comes out of it. Um, the bottom of those gates sits at an elevation of 813.6 feet. And over here is the emergency spillway. And you can see that it's been reinforced uh, at this time. It's, there's a, a weir over here that's 1,730 feet long. And when the water gets to 901 feet, it overtops that weir. So, I can best show you more detail with a satellite view. This is an older satellite view before the repairs were made to the spillways, but it's actually good because you can see over here where that emergency spillway is, this area is just dirt and vegetation. This is before the spillway incident of 2017 that created the need for evacuation. So here you have the Oroville Dam, the two spillways, and over here is an intake structure that feeds water to the turbines for the Hyatt power plant, which lies underneath the dam over in this area. And the turbines are fed by the penstocks that, that uh, come from these intake structures. And then the water is discharged into the Thermolito diversion pool. I'll, sh I'll show you close-ups a little later. But this is the Thermolito diversion pool, which is also known as, that's the Feather River, because they dammed up the Feather River when they built the dam. So, but uh, along this about four mile stretch, they call it the Thermolito Diversion Pool. So, let me just go over the ways of getting water out of the reservoir. There's the Hyatt Power Plant, the main spillway, the emergency spillway, also has can be called the auxiliary spillway, but it seems now they mostly call it the emergency spillway. There are some differences between an auxiliary and an emergency spillway, but not significant for this explanation. And then there's the river valve outlet system, the RVOS. Technically, there's another way, and it's the Palermo Tunnel. Water goes from the reservoir through the dam in a tunnel. It goes out to feed the Palermo Canal. It's a small amount of water and it's not considered some type of flood management uh, outlet. So I'm not going to focus on it here. I've made an entire video about it anyway. And of course there's evaporation with any reservoir. So I'm not gonna focus on either of these, just the power plant, the two spillways, and the river valve outlet system. And I want to explain the river valve outlet system and really the power plant at the same time. The intake structures that I showed you on that satellite view 
This is a schematic that shows the intake structures. The water is taken into there and then it goes through penstocks. There's two penstocks that feed the turbines. One penstock provides water for three of the turbines. The other penstock provides water for the other three. There's six turbines. And there are two tunnels below the dam, diversion tunnel number one and diversion tunnel number two. And those were the original tunnels that diverted water around the construction site when it was being built. They're huge. They're 35 feet in diameter. Each of them is 35 feet in diameter and about 4,400 feet long. And once the dam was finished, they plugged up the tunnels so that the reservoir could fill. And each tunnel has a plug in it. The plugs are made out of concrete and they're about 150 feet long. Diversion tunnel number one sits a little lower than diversion tunnel number two. And diversion tunnel number two is different in that they plugged it, but they also made a way for water to come through with a system of valves. So that's the river valve outlet system. And these uh, tunnels can, the, the river valve system anyway, can draw water from the lowest level of the lake that's possible. Anything that can't get out uh, via the RVOS system uh, would have to be either stay there or be pumped out in some other way. So the turbines share these uh, tunnels. The, the tunnels become the tail race for the turbines. So you have four of the turbines discharge into tunnel number one. And two of the turbines discharge into tunnel number two, along with the the river valve outlet uh, discharge. And those discharge into the Thermolito diversion pool. One point is that these intake structures can only take water until it gets down to 640 feet in elevation. If the water's not up to 640 feet, it doesn't reach the intake structures and therefore the power plant cannot operate. Okay, that is that. Let me go back just to show you a little closer now that I've explained them. Just bear with me while I turn this around. You can see the intake structures over here. How they sit. Um, they just go way down into the water to 640 feet. And then when the water goes through the dam over to here, let me get there. This is at an angle. So here's the other side of the dam, the Thermolito Diversion Pool, also known as the Feather River. And you have two outlet portals. Let me find them again. You can see them here. I'll make this as big as I can. So yeah, the two outlet portals are right there. Diversion tunnel number one and diversion tunnel number two outlet portal. And then they, they dump into this um, Thermolito diversion pool. Now, from this side, I'll show you the water comes through the power plant or the river valve outlet system into the Thermolito diversion pool. The main gated spillway dumps in or discharges into the same pool and then the emergency spillway, the water comes down this hill and into the diversion pool. And just 
I'll also show you this diversion pool goes about four miles till it gets to a diversion dam down here and water can either be sent continue to go on down the Feather River or it's diverted over to the fore bay and then ultimately the after bay and they make releases to the river from the after bay as well further on down the Feather River. So there you have it is uh, your the four main ways of getting water out. It's either coming out of these tunnels or it's coming down that spillway or it's coming over the emergency spillway. And let me see, this is a photo of when they were doing construction. This is from October of 2018. You can see how low the lake level was, the reservoir. It was, uh, you know, they had to keep it below the gates, below that 813 uh, point six foot mark so that it didn't disrupt the construction. And I like this photo because it shows the stair step design of the emergency spillway, which is now armored and uh, let me see here. Yeah, it's armored in a stair step fashion. And you, you can see here the the weir that's uh, 1,730 feet long and overtops at 901. Okay. I've showed you that. Now I wanted to show you the, um, let me find it. It's here somewhere. The stats that'll make a little more sense now that we've looked at everything. This is the, from the CDEC website and these are hourly stats. They, they do it in military time. Today, the day of the making of this video, April 26th at 1 p.m. Pacific time, USA, the um, reservoir elevation was 878.12. And the storage in acre feet is 3,203,710. The capacity of the Oroville Reservoir is about three and a half million acre feet. And an acre foot is one acre of water, one foot deep. Outflows right now are at 9,827. Inflows 21,181. So inflows are a little more than double what outflows are. And that's why this number of reservoir elevation is increasing. River releases, uh, as I described, can are part of this outflow. This outflow coming out of the reservoir that's measured, uh, some of it's going down the river, some of it's diverted over to the fore bay, after bay, and then they're putting water out of the after bay for a total of 10,000 514 in river releases. So this river releases can be higher or lower than the, the total outflows. Rain in inches as a cumulative figure. Battery voltage. Um, these sensors that measure the water are transmitted. Uh, Information is transmitted via satellite and microwaves and this battery voltage is just a figure because they're they have batteries in them and that's for the people who maintain them so there's one more that i wanted to show you right here these are key elevations of oroville reservoir and this is from the uh 2018 19 flood operations plan and i i, I want to just let you see this visual Shh, no more barking. I wanted you to see this visual that down here is a dead pool of 340 feet. Sorry about the barking. Uh, the river valve outlets can pull from that dead pool because they can go lower. Anything that's down below here uh, where, where they can't uh, 
withdraw it with the river valve system is just it's dead and um it would either stay there or have to be pumped out as i said and then there's a conservation pool that goes from the 340 feet all the way to 848.5 feet that's the conservation pool of which the emergency storage is part of that and there's a flood management pool between 848.5 feet and 900 feet. So this green part, that's the uh, flood management pool. So a lot of decisions have to go into that of, you know, what flows are they going to have? What are they opening the gates? Um, those are all within their uh, flood management decisions. And then just so that you know, above that 901 feet of the emergency spillway crest, there's a few more feet all the way up to 916.2 that's called a surcharge pool. And surcharging is basically how far they can go up um, past the emergency spillway crest. And I don't know how they do the surcharging. I don't, you know, I don't know enough about it to really speak about it other than just show you that they do allow for a surcharge pool up to 916.2 feet. And then the top of the dam is 922. So it's still, still um, below the top of the dam as it should be. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you could, you know, look at their flood operations plan. I'll, I'll reference it, but uh, it's highly technical. And the purpose of this video really is just to give you some general information about how water gets out of the Oroville Reservoir. And I'll leave you with this photo. And I thank you for viewing. And I really appreciate all of your support over the time that I've been doing videos. I hope you will like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you later.